All right, got something kind of nifty here. I've got this, uh, this is a mini computer, mini PC, um, that I'm gonna be trying to use to set up some Home Assistant, maybe Pi-hole little, you know, server services um, here around the house. So it's got this uh, N100 processor, which is a very low power. It's allegedly max TDP is six watts, but it's a, it's a four core uh, processor that can boost up to like 3.4 gigahertz. It's x86 processor, not an ARM or anything. So an actual kind of regular processor, although it is a very light, uh, lightweight, kind of light workload x86 processor, uh, 16 gigs of uh, RAM, 500 uh, gigs hard drive, so that's going to be on a M2 SSD in there. Uh, it comes with Wi-Fi and gig LAN built in, and the power supply is only a 12 volt 3 amp, so max 36 watt power supply on this thing, so it's supposed to be very efficient. And, you know, I've seen a few reviews of these things, but I don't know, a lot of them seem to be sponsored. And so I figured I'd put this up just so that you guys would maybe have a look at one of these from somebody that, you know, I paid my own money for this thing. So um, have no contact, no affiliation with B-Link um, at all. And there's a bunch of these little kind of mini PCs that are out these days. This one was like 190 bucks, so super cheap for kind of a ready to go little system. So let's open it up and see what we got. Got a little manual here. Let's see what the manual actually has inside. So English is the first five pages. So it's just, you know, a bunch of different language versions of the same thing over and over. So there you go, there's the ports. We've got a couple USBs on front, couple more USBs on back, couple of HDMI outputs, Ethernet power in. Not a whole lot going on. It does not have USB-C. They do make some versions with different stuff. They make a more expensive version that actually has 2.5 gig Ethernet ports. Um, but this, I figured, was going to be more than enough for me. Um, says it also comes with a bracket, so you can mount it on the wall or the back of a monitor. And it's supposed to, I believe, have room inside for a 2.5-inch SSD. I'll open it up here in a second. Yeah, that's it. Um, it also, by the way, does supposedly come, and I haven't fired it up yet, so I don't know, but it's supposed to come with a, uh, a Windows key uh, for, I believe, Windows 11, I think maybe even Windows 11 Pro, so we'll see um, what we got whenever we fire this thing up. So there is the little PC, but let's look at what's in the box here first. We got uh, HDMI, HDMI. Here's our power supply, and it says uh, 12 volts, 3 amps. A little bitty, uh, just a regular little wall wart to power this thing, so very lightweight. There's your bracket, and there's some hardware for the bracket. That's what's in the box. But here's the star of the show. Got the, the soft plastic bag here. So let's see, warning during the boot process, if you cannot log into your personal account, please turn off Wi-Fi and lens, like skip, and then log in, eh, whatever. Um, I don't like that. Uh, I wish this weren't shiny. I wish that button weren't red. That's just gaudy. I also wish that logo were not there. Wish I could peel that off. I would like it to be a little bit less, uh, like it to be a little less badged. You know, these things, uh, you know, nobody wants to brag about B-Link. So there we go. There's the back again, two USB ports, LAN port that's supposed to be gig, a couple of HDMI's, DC input, two USBs on front. Uh, looks like a little reset button there. So uh, let's open her up and see what we got inside. Oh, nope, there it is. Yeah, so it's got this little pull tab that helps kind of pull the lid off. The lid was a little tight, so I was worried that that wasn't working, but you just had to pull a little harder. So there you go. Um, does have a little ribbon cable there, so be careful. There's the, the drive bay for a two and a half inch hard drive. Um, looks like it's toolless, and I think I've seen that on other reviews that this is toolless. All right, so there's the inside. Now, interestingly enough, whenever you look these things up, you'll see Crucial on the RAM stick. Um, this one, let's see what we got. 
So yeah, kind of no-name AZW RAM. What's the M2 hard drive? Yeah, nothing in here is branded. Um, so unbranded, you know, or I guess AZW is what it says on the RAM, and unbranded uh, SSD. Let's see if there's anything on the other side. So there we go. Uh, AZW, 512 gig. All right, so yeah, uh, half terabyte there. Okay, so there we go. And AZW, 16 gig, single stick, single slot um, of RAM. Let's see right there, we've got the Wi-Fi chip. What's it say? There you go, it's an Intel AX101D2W. That's your Wi-Fi, it looks like it's just soldered down. Okay, so getting it out, flipping it over. Here's the back side. Um, you know, in here we've got the, the Wi-Fi antennas uh, mounted at the top, and that, that's nice. You know, you do get a little bit better reception with those antennas mounted out there. Um, there's no external antenna, just these internal antennas. So, so looking at the cooling system, um, it's probably going to be difficult for you to see down in there, but it's just basically a formed, like, bent copper plate with one heat pipe. So not a lot of cooling capacity there. Um, heat pipe comes under this heat sink, and that's being blown through by this little uh, blower fan, and that's it. So later when I do some thermal testing, uh, that's going to be interesting because there's just not a lot there. Now understand it's a low power CPU. It shouldn't need a ton of, of cooling, but yeah, that, that's not much. It just a, a little heat spreader plate made of copper and uh, one heat pipe, and that's it. So uh, anyway, that's the, uh, the internals, all right? That's all you got. So, you know, nothing really shocking. I don't think in here, anybody that's kind of familiar with these little NUC clone kind of computers, probably not shocked. Um, like I said, you know, the one thing I was kind of interested in really whenever I opened this thing up is whenever you see these advertisements and they show name brand RAM in here. And I think maybe even some of the reviews, they had crucial RAM. Uh, nope, not for me. I get AZW. So, you know, I don't know. I wonder if they send these things out for reviews sometimes and give better stuff. Now, the, the hard drives, the AZW, that does seem to be standard. So, you know, maybe not. Maybe it's just a lottery and maybe sometimes you get nicer stuff than others or maybe it's not even really crucial RAM. Maybe it's knockoff. You know, who really knows? But anyway, that's uh, that's the inside. So let me get this thing back together and uh, we'll fire it up. All right. So I got this thing plugged in and uh, I've got a kilowatt over here on the wall. So yeah, you can't make it out right now. It is reading about 2.2 watts and that's just plugged in. It's not even on yet. So uh, let's see what happens when we power it on. Okay, uh, we're up to 17, 18 watts. Again, it is powering uh, the display also. So that's probably gonna take a little bit more power. Yeah, it looks like low 20s, 21 watts, 22, 27, 29. Oh, she maxed out there for a second. 29.9 as it's booting up. Now this is the, the uh, looks like we're gonna be going into Windows here. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just finish the setup really quick. And then once we get booted into the, uh, the environment, um, I'll be right back. All right, so there we are. Um, it's loaded up and it's been going anywhere from like 15 to 20 watts, um, kind of as it just sits here with the monitor on. So uh, one thing I do want to test is the most common way that I plan on using this is with nothing attached. And so, you know, currently it's sitting around 15 watts just on the desktop. Now, if I turn off the monitor, that should drop power requirements. So it's now down under eight watts, All right? So just turning the monitor off, um, it hit about eight watts. It's starting to get down to about nine now. It's kind of hovering around nine, nine to 10 watts. It's kind of where it's settled out at. Um, so let me see if I disconnect 
everything completely and just set it kind of headless the way it would sit if you weren't doing anything. So we've got everything disconnected and we're looking at about seven watts, seven and a half. So there you go with nothing at all connected, just sitting and idling. It's at 7.4, eh, seven, seven, seven and a half watts. And you know, to me, that's that's not bad. Now I haven't messed with anything. I haven't looked at any BIOS settings. So uh, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should look at the BIOS and see if there's anything we can do to lower the power draw. Because again, uh, this is the type of thing you want to pull as little um, as little power as possible. So I've been uh, been looking through the BIOS. It's got a ton of stuff. I don't know if there's a lot that would really drop the the idle uh, power consumption, but you know, there is just a ton of stuff in here as far as, you know, you can get all kinds of information on your cores. You can change you know, or enable or disable all types of different options and features in the power section. Um, you can actually turn on or off the turbo mode, and you can also change uh, the power level here. It says uh, platform platform power limit one power in milliwatts. So right now it looks like uh, it's limited to 20 watts. Um, so you could up this, you know, and, and change the maximum power draw, it looks like, of the processor. If I'm understanding this right, I'm not a great overclock or anything, but uh, C states are enabled. I've, you know, this is how it comes. So it's, it's already set up to do all that. Um, there is also in the thermal configuration, You can actually come in here and you can set up custom fan trip points, it looks like. Um, everything is currently set to, to auto. Um, so here you can see all the thermal functions are disabled, so it's just kind of running automatically. Um, and, but, you know, it's running at, uh, let's see, 50 degrees Celsius with a 52 degree uh, system temperature. It gives you uh, right now, the fans run in at, you know, 1900 RPM, and it has smart fan stuff. Um, it's currently an automatic, but, you know, you can set up uh, custom fan curves. Now, it is pretty silent, so that doesn't really seem to be an issue. It doesn't seem to be, um, you know, audible, basically, as I'm sitting here, and it's currently pulling, you know, 16, 17 watts. Um, but now, most of the wattage is the screen, or at least half of it is probably the screen. Um, so I'm gonna boot this thing back up and we'll run a couple of little benchmarks and see how she does. So here I'm just testing the Wi-Fi and it looks okay. Um, not great, you know, the download at 88, you know, this upload's gonna be a little bit better. Uh, I'd say it's fine. All right, so I've got um, Geekbench 6 running and power uh, power did hit about 32 watts instantaneous there for a bit. In between these tests, it drops back down to 15 before it spikes back up. And again, it's kind of high end going to about 26 watts. Um, it did peak out there, you know, 30 a little above. There it is going up to 30. Yeah, it just hit 30 watts there for a second. So uh, I'll let this finish and then we'll look at the results. All right, so there's the results. We've got 1145 single core, 2986 multi-core. Um, I have no idea what these are comparable to, but it did spike up to 33, 34 watts during this test. Um, you know, that's pushing the limits of the power supply. So, you know, perhaps if you really wanted to try to push this thing, you'd need, you know, probably a five amp power supply pushed up to about 60 watts out of the wall. And then you could probably raise the uh, the power limits in the BIOS and get this thing to do a little bit better. Now, whether or not that's important, who knows? Um, let's look at the benchmark charts. So here we are out on CPU Monkey, and this says on Geekbit, on Geekbench 6, uh, the average is about 1168 on single core. We got 1145. And then on multi core, 3122, we're doing 2986. So we're lagging a bit. And again, this thing may just be power limited um, because, again, that, that power supply is only a 36 watts. Um, and we were pulling up to 
34. So it's probably just not got any headroom. Um, raise the power limits, it might be able to do a little bit better. Um, so next, I'm going to put in Cinebench, and I'm going to see what the thermals of this thing do um, when really getting slammed. All right, so let's, uh, well, let's just crush the thing. Let's do a multi-core test. All right, so we're running the, the multi-core benchmark, and it's looking like we have boosted up to 3.4 gigahertz max. We're holding at about 2.9 uh, all the way across the test. That's the current. Um, we hit 90 degrees, got all the way up to 92 at the max, and we've been pulling about 20, 21 watts which again in the BIOS, it looked like it was capped at 20 watts. So that seems to be what's going on. Oh, and I can actually see, uh, yeah, the PL states, uh, power limit one is 20, power limit two is 25. Um, so that's short duration turbo boost to 25, long duration is 20. And again, that's kind of where we've been. Uh, the max power draw has only been yeah, a little over 21 watts, so it's it's sticking there pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to let this thing finish, and then we'll look at the results. Okay, so it's just finishing up that single core test, and so it's got uh, 2556 for the multi core and 941 for the single core. Um, single core performance, you know, a little less than a Threadripper 1950X on a single core. If you look at the multi core performance rankings. Not great, um, but let's see kind of what other people have been getting. Okay, other people are getting 901 on single core. So we did a little better on the single core performance. The multi-core, we did a little bit worse, and I think that's probably a combination between thermal throttling and uh, power. Uh, probably, you know, some of these may be working with a little bit more power and a little bit better cooling system than this, but still, you know, fairly similar to what you're going to get out of this processor in other packages. All right, so um, after going through those other benchmarks, last thing I thought, uh, you know, maybe I ought to check is the actual performance of this, uh, the no-name, um, you know, NVMe drive that's in it. So let's do a little crystal disk mark check here. All right, well, there we go. That's, you know, not, not the best, but not the worst either. You know, it's better than a regular old hard drive from five years ago. So, uh, you know, not really up to modern NVMe SSD standards, but probably plenty fast to do most of anything you'd want to do on this type of system. So let's see on the system. It is AZW, by the way, the, the name on the uh, RAM and the drive is the company that makes these. So B-Link is basically a brand name of this AZW company, which is a, a computer manufacturer in Shenzhen. So apparently they're making the whole system themselves, presumably, because again, their their name is on the RAM, it's on the drive. But, um, you know, uh, nothing too surprising in here. All right, so let's look at the boot up time, because I just want to show you kind of, um, you know, how quickly the, the system gets up and running on this, because I did find it, it boots rather quickly, so it's it's off currently. Um, so here we go. And this is gonna be live real time. Okay, hit the BIOS. And there it is. It's like you know, 15 to 20 seconds to uh, to get booted up. And I mean, you do get to the desktop, like it's it's not, you know, taking a whole bunch of other time, like it's still loading up some things, but it's pretty much ready to go, um, you know, 20 seconds. So it boots up really quickly. And so um, I guess, you know, I should probably wrap this up because I don't have a ton else to say about this thing. You know, I, I'm gonna probably set this thing up as either a Proxmox server with like Pi-hole. Um, it's definitely gonna be Home Assistant. And I, I'm probably gonna do some testing to see whether running Home Assistant um, OS or running it with Windows results in kind of a better system. Um, and I would lean towards probably saying that the Home Assistant operating system is probably the way to go, but 
Um, I have heard that Windows draws less power than some Linux or other setups. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of power testing on that. But my overall thoughts on this thing are basically that you, you get what you pay for, and it's probably a good deal. Um, you know, this particular unit cost me like $180, $185. Um, that's shipping tax and all from Amazon. Um, if you want the one that has 2.5 gig Ethernet and, um, you know, maybe a, a little bit nicer setup, that is probably 50 to 70 bucks more. Um, you know, it, it's cheap. It's definitely cheap. I, I'd say my problems with it are, number one, that it just looks chintzy. I mean, it's it's a kind of a plastic box construction. I don't like the logo here. I wish it just had the nice textured finish. I wish this power button weren't red. I wish that this weren't shiny because I just think that looks cheap and it doesn't have to look cheap. It doesn't cost any more um, to have this thing look very clean. And I actually think if one of these little, you know, knockoff companies just gets rid of their branding and just builds one of these that's just plain, they would actually sell more of them. Because, I mean, the thing with, like, having something branded, people only care if you have a brand that people care about. And, I mean, who cares about B-Link? Uh, not me. Um, and, again, that red power button is just an eyesore. Um, you know, it is a little thermally limited. It is a little power limited. Now, maybe you could up the power in the BIOS and get it to perform a little bit better. I don't know if I really care about it performing better. But, you know, if you're doing like gaming emulation or maybe um, you're running Plex and you needed a little bit more performance, maybe that would help. I don't know. I'm not that uh, much of an expert on that stuff. Um, and it does get hot, so you can't just wear this thing out over time. It, it will overheat and it'll get thermally limited um, as far as its high-end performance. As far as the performance of the N100, I seem to get pretty average performance out of it. Maybe a little restricted because of the thermal and power limitations, but again, I think it's, you know, you are getting what you pay for with that. Um, the hard drive and RAM, yeah, they're cheap. Right, they they are cheap. This thing's price point based, and for 185 bucks, what can you expect? But reasonable performance out of both of them. So even though they're you know non-brand uh, stuff, they seem to work. Um, you do get Windows Pro, uh, Windows 11 Pro with it, and that seemed to work just fine. It has very low power draw. I'm sitting here looking at it, and it's pulling 15 watts right now, and that is powering the screen. Uh, this screen is powered from this USB port. So, you know, this system, you know, th this panel probably pulls seven to eight watts. And so this thing's sitting here at like 15, which means the system itself's pulling like seven. Um, it's actually, you know, the panel, this LCD panel pulls as much power as the actual system does at idle. So that's how low power this thing draws when it's just sitting. It's going to be powerful enough to probably do the work of at least probably three or four Raspberry Pis. Um, with very low power draw, um, I, I feel like it's probably a reasonable deal. Now, we'll see longevity and, you know, does it break down? Does it catch my house on fire? If anything changes, I'll post an update. You're probably not going to run a very intensive server system, you know, off of this thing. But it seems very, very capable for what it is. And I'm kind of impressed. And, you know, part of the reason I wanted to put this video out is just because the, the videos that I've seen on these are very, very often sponsored, and I just don't trust them. Um, and so this is, you know, something I bought with my own money. You know, I ran the test that you saw, so that's what you can expect. And so if you're looking at, you know, doing some sort of little home assistant server, Plex server, a little emulation gaming rig, you know, it might be worth checking one of these things out because certainly, you know, the price price seems to be pretty good, right? Like I said, 185 bucks for this thing versus go try to find a Raspberry Pi right now or anything, uh, you know, in that range, you're going to be paying 100 to 125 bucks. Well, for, you know, 50, 60 more bucks, you get a full x86 system with a Windows license um, that you can do kind of whatever you want with it. So uh, that's it. If you've got any uh, comments or questions or anything, just feel free to leave them down below and I'll get to them when I can. As always, I appreciate it. Thanks.